How do you buy a hair dryer? Well, what we're going to try to do in this segment is give you, the consumer, a little bit of knowledge and a few questions that you need to answer before you go buying a hair dryer so that you buy an appropriate hair dryer. So basically, dryers take in cold air, heat it up, and blow it out the other end. It is that simple, but there are some very unique differences within hair dryers, and we're going to show you some of the things to look for and some of the questions you need to ask when you're going out to buy one. Air volume, that's the first thing you need to think about when you're going to buy your next hair dryer. If you have very fine hair or you're diffusing it, you want a dryer that is a very low end at 26, 28, or 30 miles an hour, so it's very gentle. So if you have very fine hair, it gently dries it so that it doesn't end up being too much volume of air, which will actually flatten your hair. Let's go to the other extreme. If you have very thick and curly and coarse kind of hair, then what you want to do is you want a dryer that will blow up to 60 miles an hour because that air velocity will help to smooth it out and make it smooth if that's what you're trying to do. That's the first thing, the air volume. What is suitable for your hair? Fine fragile is low, thick coarse is high, and you know what kind of hair you have in the middle. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is the temperature which is uh, created by a little clip in the front of your dryer called the thermostat. That's what sets the temperature. So, for temperatures, they go at the low end at about 150 and at the top end at about 200 and plus on that. So, let's think about that for a moment. If I was dealing with a very soft, slow air, I certainly do not want to have a 200 degree dryer because it's slow air and it's extreme heat, so all I'm going to do is burn my hair. If you think about it, when it's appropriate, if you have a 60 mile an hour dryer with a 200 degree temperature, there's so much air velocity it balances for that kind of burning that you might get. So what you want to try to do is balance the air volume and the temperature to suit your specific needs. So, you know, ask the person selling to you if they understand and know how to mix it specifically for your hair. So next, let's look at what we call the dust caps. It's very important that you look at the dust caps and I'll tell you why. On this particular model here, you'll notice there's a grill. And when I take that grill off, it has a lot of spacious holes in it if you have a very open grill, you can actually suck your hair in and get it caught on the fan. So that's one thing. Now, the dust caps are there for primarily cleaning. So you should keep them clean. If you get too much dust and dirt on that, it chokes your dryer. Now, back to the dust caps. I want to just show you this one here. If I take this particular dust cap off, you'll notice that in the back side of this, there is a little meshy uh, material there. Now, if you have longer hair, this is more suitable because it will prevent any possibility of your hair getting sucked in and tangled into the fan. Now, we all lose hair, and you will get hair going into every hair dryer. It's, not, it's impossible not to. But this affords you a little bit more protection. So, quick review. Long hair or someone losing a lot of hair, try to get a dust cap that's really tight and close with a little mesh. So, that's your little tip on the dust caps and what to look for. Notice these two barrel ends here. We have one that is very, very wide and round, and you'll notice that this one is very, very clean and tight and focused. This is a softer airflow, and when you're diffusing, this is the kind of nozzle you want to look for something larger because it disperses the air really gently and softly. But on the other hand, if you're going for a straight look, then you want to look at a barrel that is really, really tight and focused. And when you put the nozzle on, you're concentrating that air to do the job really efficiently. So that's a quick visual. So you take your larger ones for softer air and your more focused ones for more aggressive air and heat. It's generally how they work. Next are the nozzles. This is a concentrator of air. Here's the basics. If you want really focused power and heat, then you want to look for a nozzle that is very tight and very long. If you think about it, this is very important, especially if you're straightening. And I'll tell you why. It actually focuses the air over the brush, so it helps to keep it in the same direction, so it gives you smoothness. Now, if you use a nozzle with a configuration like this, for example, you'll notice it's much wider and it's flared way out. So this is a more general nozzle, 
this one here would be for focusing. Buying a nozzle or a dryer, make sure that the nozzle configuration is appropriate for what you're trying to do. Next step, you're going to buy a diffuser. First of all, if you have a very inexpensive dryer, you'll notice that this is the diffuser that goes with it. And you'll notice that with the diffuser, there's lots of hole and lots of air to come through. And the reason is, this dryer is not very powerful. So if you were to put on a diffuser, for example, like this, that does not what I call breathe very well, onto a very inexpensive dryer, you're going to stress the motor, you're going to blow up your dryer. Remember one other thing, when you put a diffuser on, you're actually choking your dryer. You're creating a bit of a, a backdraft inside. So that means if you put it on high heat, you're going to have a problem. They have to be balanced depending on what kind of dryer you've actually decided on, which is appropriate with the air and the temperature. So when you're buying a diffuser, make sure that it fits because when they say universal fitting, it, it, it's just a spring load. Some of them, like this particular one here, actually has a specific configuration and it only fits on that dryer. So it's already balanced in manufacturing for you. But when you're buying it specifically for your dryer, take it in and try it to make sure that it is balanced. People come in and say, what is the most fabulous dryer in the world? I want to buy it. No such thing as the best dryer in the world. It can only be a dryer that is suitable for you. And that means you have to balance the temperature and the air volume to suit your specific needs. That, to me, is the best dryer in the world. That's why we want to do this for you. Help you, give you some information on exactly what features and benefits they have and what works for you. Anyway, good shopping and uh, enjoy your hair dryers.